Are you and your family always running out of space on your phones or laptops? Is your cloud storage full and nagging you for a monthly payment? Do you just wish you had somewhere to store and easily share all your files with plenty of space, fast speed and no additional running costs? In this video, I'll show you how one device could change everything for you. Storage and backup may not be the most glamorous subject around, but it is absolutely essential, especially when so many of us work with and store our most precious memories only on portable devices, which are so easy to damage or lose. For many years, I've personally relied on a network attached storage device or NAS for short. These let you install several drives and present them as one big storage pool that can be shared securely with anyone you like without the cost of a monthly subscription. Most NAS units can also be set up to protect against one of those drives failing. I use NAS to store all of my data before then automatically duplicating the most important files onto portable drives or cloud services for a secure offsite backup. Remember, you do need two or more copies of your data for true backup, ideally in different locations in case something happens to any of them. But a decent NAS can be expensive and hard to set up for a beginner. So when Ugreen approached me to make a video about their latest affordable models that are aimed at first timers or simply anyone on a tighter budget, I thought it would make for an interesting and useful guide. Ugreen sponsored this video, but the tests and results are my own. And as always, I'll point out the pros and cons. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at two units, the NASSYNC DH2300, an entry-level two-bay model aimed at first-timers with more basic storage requirements that costs around $200 or £170, and the higher-end four-bay NASSYNC DH4300 Plus that costs around $430 or £360 and supports faster speeds and larger capacities with greater protection against drive failure. Check my links below for the latest deals on both at Amazon as there's often discounts. Both units can provide a huge amount of fast storage that can be accessed by any computer, phone or tablet that's connected to your home or office Wi-Fi. You can keep all that storage to yourself or share some or all of it with co-workers or members of your family, making it ideal not just for ensuring everyone's data is backed up, but also for collaborating on projects. They can even organize your photos and videos and connect your TV as a media player. Better still, you can provide remote access to anyone you choose, allowing them to access specific folders or files from any location. Again, perfect for sharing big files or collaborating on projects without the cost of cloud storage. In fact, for some people, a one-off NAS purchase could effectively replace or at least minimize an ongoing cloud subscription, saving you money in the long term. Okay, so let's set them up. And like most NAS units, you do need to provide your own drives and you base that on how much storage you actually need and how much protection you want against any of them going wrong. You can use standard two and a half inch or three and a half inch serial ATA drives, but ideally do go for matching models and ones that are designed for NAS units that are generally left switched on all the time. I used four terabyte Seagate Ironwolf hard disks for this test. Lifting the cover on either unit reveals their drive bays with the discs fitted into trays that slot into the NAS vertically. Ugreen provides screws and a tool to mount two and a half or three and a half inch drives securely into these trays. Note Ugreen doesn't mention hot swappability, so to play safe, you should only insert or remove drives with the unit shut down and switched off. The DH2300 has two drive bays, so you can fit one or two drives. If you choose two, the NAS can effectively join them together into one big storage pool. Now, most NAS units offer this with a drive configuration called either JBOD or RAID 0. Or you can have one drive constantly mirroring the other one, which may only give you the space of one of those drives, but crucially with protection against one of them failing for whatever reason. NAS units typically use a drive configuration called RAID 1 to do this. The biggest drive size that's supported by either of these NAS units is 30 terabytes. So let's say you have two of those drives. You could either join them together in RAID 0 to provide a total space of 60 terabytes, or go for the RAID 1 option, where you'd only have 30 terabytes of space available, but with protection against either of those drives failing in the future. Meanwhile, the DH4300 Plus has four drive bays, allowing you to fit one to four drives. Fitted with one or two drives, it works the same as the simpler DH2300. But if you install three or four drives, the NAS will give you more options on how they can work together. One of the most popular configurations for three or more drives is called RAID 5. This combines most of their space while also including some protection. Typically, you'd lose the space of just one drive when doing this. So the more drives you install, the less you end up sacrificing for protection. 
So let's say you have three of those 30 terabyte drives. You could have a maximum of 90 terabytes of storage without any protection using RAID 0, or 60 terabytes in RAID 5 with protection against any one of those drives failing. Or if you have four of those 30 terabyte drives, you could have a maximum of 120 terabytes of storage, albeit without any protection using RAID 0. Or you could have 90 terabytes in RAID 5, again with protection against any one of those drives failing. That's a pretty good trade in my view, and it's a strategy that I've relied on over the years. And should a drive fail in the future, you can just remove it and fit a replacement and let the NAS automatically rebuild for full protection again, during which time all of your files remain available, albeit with a bit slower access. Know that when you format any drive for use, whether it's in a NAS or a portable or anything else, you will always lose a small amount of space. So with a four terabyte drive, you're gonna end up with more like 3.6 or 3.7 terabytes in use. But with a typical NAS unit, we're still talking about having several terabytes available, even tens of terabytes, with the only cost being when you first set it up. Compare that to typical cloud-based plans like iCloud or Google Drive, which charge around eight to $10 or pounds every month just for two terabytes of storage. Many of these services also max out at eight terabytes, which may not be enough for you in the long term. Sure, cloud services are convenient and do have the benefit of being off-site too, but that is an ongoing subscription that will add up over time, especially if you end up needing more storage, which of course most of us are going to. They suck you in with a few gigabytes of free space and short-term upgrade deals, but long-term, you're going to be on a subscription that keeps getting bigger. So let's set up the DH2300 with a pair of those four terabyte Seagate drives. Once the drives are fitted in their trays and inserted into the NAS, you just need to connect two cables to get started. The first is a network cable, a new green supplies one in the box. This plugs into the port on the NAS, and you should connect the other end to a spare port on your broadband router, hub, or network switch. Note, to keep costs down, the DH2300's network port only runs at one gigabit speed, making it potentially slower than the 2.5 gigabit ports on higher end units like the DH4300+. Now I say potentially, as you're only gonna enjoy 2.5 gigabit speed if your router, hub, or network switch also has 2.5 gigabit ports on it. Now, many older or budget routers only run their ports at one gigabit, so the DH2300 will be just fine for anyone intending to use those. And even if you have a newer router, the DH2300 will still be compatible, it'll just be running at a top speed of one gigabit. Meanwhile, those of you with more powerful networking gear who want the maximum speed from their NAS should invest in a model like the DH4300 Plus for its faster 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, plus a number of other benefits that I'll mention in just a moment. Either way, it's important to remember that even a wired gigabit connection to a NAS is still way faster than uploading files to a typical cloud service. Next, connect the power cord to the mains and press the power button on the front of the unit to switch it on. As the DH2300 powers up, you'll see two lights flashing, indicating the status of each drive inside. Meanwhile, the DH4300 Plus has four lights to indicate the status of up to four drives inside. The DH2300 power supply is built into the AC plug, while the DH4300's larger supply uses a separate AC cable. About half a minute later, you'll hear a beep indicating that the unit is ready to set up. You can do this from a web page on a laptop or from the Ugreen app, which runs on iOS or Android phones. And you don't even need to search for the app as tapping your phone against the NFC tag on the front of the box will take compatible phones to the official page. Whether you're using your laptop or a phone, the next step is to search for the NAS, which was found almost immediately on my network. You can then give it a name before then setting up an administrator account, along with entering an email to provide remote access outside your home or office. The NAS then installs its operating system files and reboots, which took about five minutes on mine. You should then use the web page or phone app to configure your storage. And as noted earlier, the options depend on which model you have and how many drives are installed. With two drives installed in either the DH2300 or DH4300+, Plus, you have two main options. You can either join both of them into one big storage pool using JBOD or RAID 0, but while both will maximize your storage, in my case to 7.4 terabytes, they will be vulnerable to disk failure. Now, should one of your disks break, you stand to lose all of the data on that drive or even the entire array. 
Alternatively, you can choose RAID 1, which as described earlier, duplicates the files from one drive onto the other. This means your total storage is only going to be the size of one drive, that's 3.7 terabytes in my case, or indeed the smallest of your two drives if they're different sizes, but crucially, it does protect your data from one of those drives failing. And should this happen, you can remove it, replace it with another one, and allow the unit to rebuild during which your files will still remain available. Now, it can initially be hard to give up half of your potential storage in a two-drive system, but I'd still recommend it for protection and peace of mind. As mentioned earlier, the DH4300 Plus provides more flexibility thanks to its four drive bays. Install four drives, and you can choose more advanced options like RAID 5, which will give you the space of three of those drives joined together, while only sacrificing the space of one to provide protection against disk failure. The really clever part about RAID 5 is you're protected against any one of those disks failing, thereby giving you the killer combination of large capacity and redundancy. So with four of my four terabyte drives fitted, RAID 5 would give me a total of around 11 terabytes of usable space, again with protection against any one of them failing. This is the option I've used for years, and I stand behind it, although if you go for the simpler DH2300, just choose big enough drives so that you can store everything you need on one, leaving the other to protect it in a RAID 1 setup. Once confirmed, the NAS will then go off and configure the storage, and this can be a lengthy process on any model, taking several hours or even overnight, depending on the size of your drives and how you configured them to work together. But during this time, it remains accessible, albeit running a bit slower due to the background tasks that it's performing. As either NAS was doing its work, I was impressed by how quietly they ran. There's only the faintest whir of the cooling fan with the occasional clicks of the drives. And from a meter or so away, it was barely audible. Certainly way quieter than a typical PC and very discreet. It's also possible to turn off all of those flashing lights via the Ugreen app if you're finding them a bit distracting, say in a living room. Once the drive is formatted, you can access it from any of your devices by logging in with your admin name and password from the dedicated app for mobile, desktop or even TVs, or simply connecting via a website. You can also enable services like SMB to directly access the drive in the Finder on a Mac. In my case, I now have 3.7 terabytes of space to store or access files, but with a number of key benefits over simply connecting a 4 terabyte portable USB drive. First, I don't need to physically plug the drive into my laptop or phone. I can simply access it wirelessly over Wi-Fi on my home network. Secondly, I don't even need to be in the same building, as remote access lets me connect to my drive wherever I am. Third, I can easily share the drive or parts of it with other people, and we can all access it at the same time too. And fourth, since I configured my two disks as RAID 1, my data is protected against one of those disks failing. In my test with the DH2300 running a RAID 1 array using two of those Seagate 4 terabyte drives, I was able to upload a 2.99 gigabyte folder containing 177 photos from either my wired Windows PC or MacBook over Wi-Fi in about 45 seconds. Meanwhile, a 10 gigabyte video file took about 115 seconds, so just under two minutes to upload from my MacBook over Wi-Fi, or just 91 seconds, or about a minute and a half, for my Windows PC. As for my phone, I had over 2,600 photos on my iPhone 16, so I set the Ugreen app to back them all up in the background over Wi-Fi, which took about an hour. Obviously, subsequent updates involving just a few photos at a time would be much faster, just a few seconds to couple some new shots. Now, the Gigabit Network port did hold back potentially faster speeds, but this is still way quicker than uploading to cloud services. It took me over 12 minutes to upload that same folder of photos to my Google Drive, and that was using a very fast internet upload speed of 100 megabits per second. Obviously, if your internet is slower, then that is going to take even longer. But a NAS can do even more. Ugreen's UGOS operating system and a selection of free apps can expand its capabilities. Most importantly, there's the Files app, which lets you manage your storage, create new folders, and share them. Use this alongside the control panel to create new users and set limits on what they can access and how much space they can use. You could set up areas for each family member to back up their phone photos, for example, or a folder for sharing big files with someone from work. You could also set up a separate area just, say, for time machine backups from a Mac. 
Ugreen also makes it really easy to connect from a remote location. Now I've struggled to get this working on other systems in the past, but in a single step, I was able to connect directly to the Ugreen NAS with my phone running the Ugreen app or from my laptop with the web interface. This makes it a much more practical option for anyone wanting to back up a device on the move, access any of their data while they're away, or share a project without having to use cloud services. You can see me here remotely accessing that folder of photos that I used in my tests. Expanding on file to external drives. Both of the Ugreen NAS units I tested have a pair of USB-A ports on the rear and a single USB-C port on the front, and they are all 3.2 standard running at 5 gigabits per second. You can connect USB drives to any of these to copy files to and from the NAS. Meanwhile, the Cloud Drives app lets you connect to a number of cloud services, including Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive, Quark Drive, and three Chinese providers, Baidu NetDisk, Allian Drive, and 115 Drive. I hope in the future to see support for Dropbox and Amazon Cloud Storage added, as well as maybe an easy way to connect to iCloud. Again though, once connected, you can copy files between the NAS and cloud services for offsite backup. Speaking of backup, the Sync and Backup app lets you automate jobs that regularly backup or synchronize specific folders or devices. If you're running the phone app, you can set it to automatically backup all your photos, a bit like using Google Photos or iCloud, but with much greater potential storage and no monthly fees. And speaking of images, the Photos app lets you manage your pictures and use local processing in the NAS to search within them for, say, people, places, things, or even text that's been recognized by the system. You can see it here finding images based on search terms like sunset, beach, or sky. And again, this is running internally. It's not going out to the internet for this. Music and videos can also be managed and searched, and both units are fitted with HDMI ports that can connect directly to TVs for streaming content that you've got stored on them. Or you can install the Ugreen app on compatible TVs and access it that way. Right now, there's no app in UGOS to directly control security cameras like some NAS units, but this may come in the future or be possible via third parties. Also note, if you're after the Docker app to run other apps or services, you're going to need the 4300 Plus for its extra memory. It's an option ready to download on the UGOS App Center for the 4300, but it is not officially listed for the 2300. Overall, the Ugreen DH2300 and 4300 Plus provide a compelling and affordable alternative to cloud subscriptions or portable drives. They can offer way more storage than most cloud services, they run faster, and crucially don't require a monthly payment. For some situations, you really could think of a NAS as your own private cloud. Meanwhile, compared to a portable drive, you can access them wirelessly, even remotely, and share the space between multiple people even at the same time. And as mentioned earlier, you can even configure them to protect against a disk failing. Now, NAS units have always offered these facilities, but sometimes at a higher cost or greater complexity than many have been comfortable with. That's why so many of us get sucked into cloud subscriptions or juggling multiple portable drives. But I feel Ugreen has done a really good job with the DH2300 and 4300 Plus units, making them quick and easy to set up and run. In particular, I was impressed how easily I could access my files from a remote location. This in turn means I could viably use just one unit to back up the photos from all my family's phones, as well as having a shared space for collaborations, again without paying a monthly fee. They're also surprisingly quiet in operation, and you can turn off the flashing lights too if you like, so you could discreetly accommodate one, say, in your living room next to a broadband router. As for deciding between the two units, the cheaper DH2300 is a simple model that should be adequate for most homes that aren't constantly hammering the storage or benchmarking file transfers. But if you want greater flexibility and speed, I'd recommend the 4300 Plus. This comes with more memory, faster processing, and quicker potential networking, as well as crucially having the chance to install more drives to better balance storage space with disk protection. You can also download apps like Docker directly from the UG OS App Center on the 4300, which provides even more flexibility on what you can do with it. So these features all make the 4300 Plus a far more capable unit, although again, it may be overkill for those with only basic storage requirements. As always though, remember any storage device or service can only count as backup if you have two copies of your files, ideally in different locations. So if you use a NAS to free up space on a laptop or a phone, it may now contain the only copy of those files. So be sure to duplicate them onto a portable drive, cloud storage, or even a second NAS for full protection.
That's what I personally do, but I find the NAS is the perfect device for managing the entire process. Just copy everything onto it, then use the apps to synchronize or back up for full protection and peace of mind. If any of this sounds tempting to you, check out Ugreen's NAS solutions in the links below. And thanks again to Ugreen for sponsoring this video. Do let me know in the comments your solutions for affordable and stress-free backup. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.